that will come. When I see the prices of smoked salmon, I just want to take to the streets. But that feels both too real and also ineffective. So I'll take to the internet, which is equally as ineffective but doesn't feel as real. Anyway, while my dopamine dripper drips as I await the avalanche of validation from my bootless cries against the fish industry from the similarly frustrated, a thought struck me right in the anterior temporal gyrus, and it said, No more, fellow fish fanatics! We need not rely on close to expiration date sales in order to gain accessibility to smoked salmon. It takes a day to do it yourself, and you only need three ingredients. So let's get started. For this curing method, you're going to completely submerge the fish in a half-half mix of salt and sugar, along with whatever aromatics you'd like to perfume your fish. I'm using dill and the zest of a lemon. Meaty red-fleshed fish works best for this method. I'm using salmon and trout. First, you want to cut your fish into pieces the size of whatever container you're going to use to cure it in. Trim off the thinner bits, such as the belly, so that you get an even cure. Don't throw them away though. Salt them and fry them up. Those are the best bits. The belly in particular has a high fat content, which makes it juicy and delicious. Once you have some nice square pieces, take a sharp knife and remove the skin. You do this so that the cure can penetrate the fish from both sides. Save the fish skin as well. You can fry that up and get lovely little fish chips. For the cure, weigh out an even amount of salt and sugar and then whisk until thoroughly mixed together. Then grate in the zest of one lemon and rip off a few hunks of fresh dill and do your best to mix it all up evenly. I'm using a fork because all that plant matter would get stuck in the whisk. Add a layer of your curing mixture to a container and place your fish on top. Then cover the top of the fish with another layer of cure, making sure that all sides are in contact with the curing mixture. If you have space in your container, you can add successive layers of fish. Same deal with the other one. Then cover it up and let it chill in the fridge for one to two days, depending on the size of your fish. When you pull it out, you'll notice that a significant amount of moisture has been drawn out of the fish, and the salt and sugar will have penetrated the fish, making it delicious and also safe to eat raw, as any little parasites would have succumbed to diabetes and or hypertension. Then rinse off your fish in cold water and pat it dry with a paper towel. Look at that cross section. That's beautiful. That's delicious. That's amazing. That's wonderful. Ah, c'est magnifique. Lovely. For the fish skin, heat up a high smoke point oil and fry your skin for a minute or two on both sides until it puffs up and browns a little. Side note, if you're filming, keep your distance because this stuff splatters and for those who haven't been monetized, camera lenses are expensive. Anyway, it will still be floppy while it's cooking, but once you take it out, it'll go rigid pretty quickly in whatever shape it was in when you pulled it out, so keep that in mind. Lay it on a paper towel to absorb any excess grease and hit it with some salt while the oil is still hot so that the salt will stick. There's many ways to enjoy cured fish one of which we covered in our first video. But today, we're going big, and we're making fish tartare. Well, pseudo fish tartare. Real fish tartare is made with sushi grade fish that is safe to eat completely raw. What I have is supermarket grade fish, which is most assuredly not safe to eat raw. But curing it is the next best thing, so that's what I'm gonna do. Anyway, I'm gonna be making two flavor profiles. One being citrusy and herbaceous, and the other being more inspired by classic sushi flavors and will be more umami and a little heavier. Once you finally mince all your ingredients, it's as simple as buying a black plate because you gave into the need to be a visual hack, 
and then tightly packing some cheap plastic cookie cutters with your mix. Make a little divot with your thumb to gently nestle a quail egg yolk, which is a common and coincidentally photogenic topping for tartare. Then gently remove the mold and marvel at just how easy this was. Then do the exact same thing with your other mix. Quail eggs have a slightly more rubbery membrane than chicken eggs, so I've found that the best way to crack them is to actually puncture the membrane with a paring knife and then retrieve the yolk. Place the yolk on top of your divot and then put some other sprouted odds and ends on your plate to fancify it and justify an automatic 18% gratuity. And now, here it is. The fanciest fancy fancy food I've fancily eaten. No. <laughs> what do you want me to say? Ta-da! All right, let's try this fancy bullshit, shall we? Just gonna break this yolk. Quail yolks are safe to eat. I read it online, it must be true. Yeah, that's amazing. Hold on, I'm gonna do with this skin, the salmon skin. And use it like a, like a spoon here. I abandon all dignity. I mean, these little pieces of grass here. I mean, in a restaurant, somebody gets paid just, just to do that. Much appreciated. This one is very umami. It tastes like sushi. The soy sauce and the sesame and the, and the nori specifically, that really comes through. This is more simple. This is more direct. This is like a, a highway for the lemon zest. This one's a little more floral, citrusy, a little more what you would expect to go with like salmon and trout. Let me tell you, life may be a zero sum game, but when you eat something like this, feels like it adds up to one. This is democratizing bougie nonsense. This is liberty. Well, that's it for me, folks. I'm off to the monocle store so I can look the way I feel after eating that fancy fish tartare. And as always, do what you love because nobody cares and it doesn't matter.